Hey guys, welcome back to the Design Cure. My name is Brian Lee and I'll be your instructor for this lesson. In the previous lesson, we looked at the living room design kit that is now available on the Design Cure's website. I made the living room design kit to make your life easier. It allows you to spend less time on building rooms and more time on design. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at tricks and tools to quickly cut out and remove backgrounds from photographs. So with no further ado, let's get started. As designers, we're commonly faced with the unfortunate task of removing backgrounds from images. So I thought it'd be important to run through the different techniques I use when removing backgrounds from my interior designs. So whenever I'm looking for images online, I want to try to find images that have the most amount of contrast between the objects that I want and the backgrounds behind them. So when I say contrast, I'm talking about mainly two things. One is the difference between tonal values dark and light, and the other is the difference between color values, like red and blue. So in general, if you can't find an image with these types of contrast between the objects and their backgrounds, you'll need to revert to a manual technique, which takes a long time, and let's be honest, we have more important things to do than trace a chair. So let's try to avoid the situation at all costs. On the other hand, sometimes there just is no other way around it. So I'm going to start with a manual technique that I use when all other options fail. So here's an example of a situation where I just really don't have any option of a perfect background to object contrast. Um, you can see here that each one of these images has a similar color within the object as it does on the background. We do have the benefit of having a little bit of a contrast between darks and lights, but that's mainly just over the blue color. So where the wall intersects to the chair, there's just a whole bunch of uh, very similar values going on. So it's going to be a little difficult to capture them separately by using the non-manual tools. So I'm going to pick, I don't know, let's pick, uh, let's pick this one. A little bit more difficult it's got a lot more going on um, so let's see if we can use our lasso tools manually to uh, get this working <clears throat> so just quickly let's just see if we can get anything with this magic wand tool I'm going to turn up the tolerance to 50 and so you can see as soon as I start selecting things, it's starting to catch part of the couch or part of this chair. Um, you know, some areas are working, but others, it's just catching too much of the chair. So uh, let's just dive right in there and go over these polygonal tools. So right off the bat, we have the polygonal lasso tool selected. Above that, we have the freeform lasso tool. And then below that is the magnetic lasso tool. So let's just go through these real quick. Um, zoom in a little bit. So the free form's cool and I, I like to use it a lot. Um, I use a Wacom tablet, which allows me to get very smooth strokes. And I know a lot of designers use mouses, mice. <laughs> uh, so this might be a little bit more difficult in that scenario and you may want to use more polygonal, more of a polygonal lasso. So you can see that the freeform lasso tool allowed me to make really smooth strokes and uh, it just allowed me to uh, follow the line that I wanted. Now the polygonal lasso tool is a little different in that you have to <clears throat> hold, so as soon as you click, it, it puts you on a point, on an anchor point, and then you drag and you can just start going along the line. Um, so as long as you make a lot of small selections versus like big long ones like this, um, you can get a pretty good result and it won't look too blocky. But uh, so if you do the long ones, you end up cutting out a lot of little pieces and stuff. So you will have to keep it pretty, pretty short to make it look like an organic selection. Um, 
And then we have the magnetic lasso tool. Now this one works very similar to how the magic wand tool works and how the eraser um, background eraser tool works in that it uses the contrast that it picks up um, to make the selection. So in a way, we really shouldn't be using this because if we had the option of using contrasts or values, then we would have already accomplished that with the magic wand tool or the background eraser tool. And you'll see more of why that makes sense in the next few minutes when we start covering those tools. I very rarely use this. You can see it's not really catching the edge how as much as I'd like it to. Um, but just so you know, it's there. Uh, so let's go back to our, our, our freeform lasso tool here. Remove that. And uh, let's just try to get this bad boy cut out as close as we can. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do one selection if I can. If my hand lets me do that. And then we'll go back and uh, just tweak it a little bit more. I do recommend you guys try to try a Wacom tablet out. I know it's hard to change what you're used to, and I know that there's no scrolling options um, with a Wacom tablet like you have with a mouse, but it really helps to do quick selections like this. And if you get into painting or masking in the future, you'll see why it's, it's very advantageous to be able to, to really draw as you would on a piece of paper. So that's it all right for us. Um, let's go and try the polygonal just to pick up these last few pieces. So the thing about the lasso tool is if you hold shift after you've already made a selection, it's going to give you a little plus sign on your, uh, on your, on your lasso tool where the cursor is. If you hold alt, it'll give you a minus sign. So if you hold shift, it's a plus sign. That means you're going to be adding to your selection. And if you hold minus or alt, that's going to be subtracting from your selection. So that's, uh, that's the trick there. I'm going to go back to my freeform. I'm going to hold shift and just uh, clean this up a little bit more. I think this is pretty good for our purposes here. You kind of get the idea, hopefully. Cool. So that's how I would make a, um, a selection using manual techniques. Uh, from here, you would just, you could hit C command J, which will take your selection and put it on its own layer. Um, cool. So let's move on to some other tools. All right. So let's talk about the magic wand tool. This is definitely one of my favorite and one of my most top used tools. Here we have uh, a plant pot, it's a very commonly found style of uh, people selling pots and plants. Um, so I'm just going to drag that into Photoshop if I can. Sometimes these images are a pain. That works. All right, so let's just blow that up a little bit so we can see what's going on. And cool. So what I like about this image is that it does have a very clean um, jump from the object we want and the background behind it, because both of because of the color of the plant, and also it's it's dark enough in the pot that we might have a good chance of getting it with with just the wand. Um, we're not going to worry about uh, capturing these shadows or anything. We're just going to try to get the plant alone. Um, so let's give it a shot. I'm going to go over here to the magic wand tool. And you'll notice that uh, some of the some of the specs come up up here and it's got a starting with a 30 tolerance. Um, Anti-alias is on, which uh, makes sure that there's no jagged edges. 
Now I usually just work with the default settings of the magic wand tool with exception of playing around with the tolerance occasionally. So um, let's, let's see what we can get right off. Right off default settings here. Um, all right, so that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and delete that and just work our way in. Oops, command plus. See what we're left with here. Magic wand tool, and let's get into some of these other areas. Just start removing pieces and parts. I'm going to turn on the background image so we can see what we're missing. And in some cases, you may even want to change this background layer to a different color, like a red or black or something, um, depending on the image you're trying to isolate. So you can see if there's any any other pieces and parts laying around that you won't want in, inside of your uh, finished design. So yeah, this 30% is working pretty well. You can see here that some of my pot was selected. Um, so to fix that, I'm just going to go to the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to hold Alt, which is going to give me that minus sign. And then I'm just going to click once here and drag it down to the bottom of the base. And then just make that selection. Double click. Oops. And there we go. So it's not selecting uh, my pot anymore. And I'll just delete the excess. And back to the magic wand tool. And you can get as, as detailed as you want with this stuff. For most um, for most plant stuff, you're not going to be seeing seeing it up close and personal. Um, most people are going to be concentrating and looking at all the furniture that you're adding to a bit or to a room. So it's up to you how how detailed you get with this, how much time you have, and stuff like that. Um, let's get this straggler here. I am going to change the tolerance for this last little bit to see if I can reduce it a little bit so that I get a good selection here without grabbing the pot. Maybe we can turn it up to 15. Because I do like, I would like to try to keep a little bit of that shadow underneath it so it has a natural weight to it. Cool, so that's pretty good. I'm just gonna go into my lasso tool one last time, but this time I'm gonna get the freeform lasso tool and just start cleaning up with all these little miscellaneous pieces and parts. Cool. I think that's pretty good. Um, I think some of these edges are a little bit sharp so let's see if we can clean that up by going to first we're going to hold command and we're going to select our now isolated object right in the thumbnail and that's going to select all of it and then we can go to select refine edge and uh, now we can just try to smooth out the edges just a little bit i'm looking at the bottom of the pot to try to Make sure it's just not too jagged. At the same time, you don't want to go too far. Otherwise, it'll really start blurring out your image. So, And then I can go up here to see the original. And it's previewing. So you can see how much of the image you're losing. It's kind of a cool tool. I think that looks good. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's giving me a selection. So you can see that it selected the area that I uh, just refined. So to isolate that, I just need to um, hit Command J. And that way, I have my new selection with the refined edge on its own layer. Again, that's Command J. After you make a selection, if you hit J, it makes uh, takes your selection and puts it on its own layer. Cool, so that is the magic wand tool. Um, before moving on, I do want to let you guys know that there are other options. Um, 
I personally enjoy the magic wand tool the best. However, there are things like the quick selection tool. So if I turn my image on here and I drag, um, you can see that it, it does quick selections. So that's kind of a nice tool to use. Um, there is the background or the magic eraser tool and the background eraser tool. Um, these basically let's duplicate that so I don't destroy it. Um, these basically just do they delete for you automatically without you having to make the selection and then hit delete. So um, just kind of drag it along this area and uh, it will cause some problems if you're not careful um, and then there's the magic eraser tool which just basically does a selection and then deletes it for you um, but again all of these tools work on the same parameters in that they're looking at the contrast of the image to determine what to delete so in the end they're all basically the same tool it just comes down to the question of which one do you like to use best but for me it's the magic wand tool forever in future lessons, we're going to go over some more advanced techniques, but uh, for now, you guys have the basics, and I think that's going to help you move forward quickly um, on your bids. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in the next lesson. All right, guys, so in the next lesson, I will be teaching how to take a common front view of a table and manipulate it into a three-quarter view using one-point perspective. Keep in mind, we do have a downloadable template available on the Design Cares website built for all levels of Photoshop experience. It's filled with everything you need to quickly build custom rooms at the click of a button. Spend less time building rooms and more time on design. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel and receive new tutorials every week that will help you master Photoshop for interior design. Thanks again for joining me and we'll see you next time.